So hello and welcome. Happy Christmas Day, December the 25th. I'm Frederick Dunn and I live in the state of Pennsylvania. It's supposed to be snowy and cold outside, but that's not what's happening here. Thought I would walk around and look at the entrances of all these hives because it went into the 50s in Fahrenheit and the bees were flying and investigating absolutely everything around my house in the bee yard and everywhere else. So I decided I would walk you around and look at all the landing boards, or at least most of them. And if you notice, I did put metal plates on the front of some of these, and that's because these plates have an opening that is exactly three eighths of an inch high, and they're designed to accommodate the hive guard entrances. But I needed something to keep the mice out. Mice will go into things a little more open than that. And if you look at this configuration, there's a feeder shim on top, a medium super, a deep brood box, a slatted rack, and then this entrance here, three eighths of an inch. The first order of business that the bees did today was to drag out their dead. So when it's cold outside in a normal winter, uh, the dead would just pile up inside if the bees didn't fly out. Otherwise, you might see them scattered around the snow in front of a hive. And a kind of shotgun pattern. There are a couple of dead bees here on the landing board. They've been dragged out and later some of the other bees will fly them away from the hive. This is an Apame hive, full size, 10 frame, medium deep at the top. I like these even though they uh, are getting a little dark on the outside. So they might need a good cleaning one of these days. I like that we can control these entrances. Entrances are small here. Feeder shim on top, insulated inner cover, medium super, and of course 10 frame, and then a deep, and that has 10 frames, lying straw standard, and it's on a slatted rack, so it shows that the Apple May hives are compatible with wooden wear as well. Entrance is small, I had a little screen there in case I needed to close it up a little bit because guess what's going on? Uh, there are no resources in the environment for the bees right now. So the chances of robbing one another out are very high. Now this one, I had some landscape cloth I had to wrap around the top because I noticed a gap between the wood there and I didn't want the winter wind to be blowing through. So I temporarily placed that. But other than that, there's an insulated inner cover, medium, honey super, and then of course the deep brood box. And look at the population here, including some leftover drones, which is kind of surprising. Now, if you look at all the debris on the landing board here, it could look like there's some robbing, but here's the key. If you see them dragging out some of their dead bees and flying away with them, they're not being robbed. Robbers don't clean house. This is a seven frame Apame double deep. So that's what their nuke is. And all the upper entrances you'll notice are closed. They have a fantastic feeder system on top, so you can put fondant up there. And this is open, of course, both sides. So we have 14 deep Langstroth frames on this hive and they are looking very good. Right next door to that one is the full 10 frame Apame hive, double deep, fully loaded, lots of activity. And again, easy sliding control with the entrances there and keeping them small is pretty key because remember there are robbers looking to take advantage of weaker colonies. Now this kind of activity uh, could cause them to use up a lot of their resources. So we're hoping that's not happening here. We have triple deeps. These are nucleus resource hives, five over five over five deep Langstroth frames, no upper feeding, no supplemental feeding. And they just have migratory covers on top with insulated rigid styrofoam caps on top of those. And this is what we have. These are resource hives if I ever need a queen or if I need brood or anything else in spring. And if I don't keep up with them, they explode and they swarm themselves, of course. But again, I have some colonies being fed, some not. They all have insulated covers. They all have no top venting. This one has a feeder shim on top. And then the Bee Smart Insulated Inner Cover, medium super, full of honey at the end of the year and a deep brood box. Now this one, of course, is a flow hive, so it's got the adjustable feet. It has a screen bottom removable tray and screens on the front. I have not noticed a difference if I allow this ventilation on the front as compared to those that have solid entrance reducers on the front. And we do this year after year. 
they're looking healthy, they're behaving normally at the landing board. So everything seems okay here. This is again a feeder shim on top, insulated in recover, medium super, 10 frame, and it's in bad shape. That's going to have to be replaced in the spring. We have a standard Langstroth deep box, and then a slatted rack, and then a reduced entrance. And that is 3 8 of an inch high. No mice are getting through the 3 8 inch openings. And they could actually be narrower in width. Here we are at the B Academy building and it has three observation hives in it and all of those are extremely active. Every observation hive this year requeened itself. They uh, are not receiving any fondant, for example. All their feed is closed off. We do not take honey from these, so whatever they store and whatever they consume and as many times as they decide to swarm, they're allowed to do it. So these go through winter. The building is not heated. It is facing south. It has windows facing south. So even today when it's 50 degrees outside up to 58 degrees outside, it hits 69 degrees inside the unheated building. So it does make a difference to have the long axis of this building facing south. Ivory B. This is the hive design that came from Israel and I'm um, testing it out this year. We occupied it with a swarm. The swarm has done extremely well. In fact, I'm gonna pop the lid on this. Some people ask about insulation. Am I going to insulate this hive? No, it's already insulated. Front, back, top, bottom. It has insulation already built into it. So we're gonna lift it up and I'm gonna show you that front to back, they are chock-a-block with comb honey. There you go. Every single frame, and there are 15 of them, full capped honey they are more than set obviously no supplemental feeding no help and they really are making use of that cylindrical space there and uh, I have no worries about that long Langstroth hive this was my first long Langstroth hive design that I actually built you can see the plans for free online at the way to be dot org now this one I also put the hive gate metal adapter plate because guess what the middle section of this is also only 3 8 of an inch high and uh, I just put that as a cover to the much larger 6 inch long entrance that was in this long length Roth hive they are doing extremely well we took four bee colonies from that long length Roth this year and it snapped right back this is my grandson's first beehive he always wants updates on it we have his solid bottom board that is in the winter position it's three eighths of an inch open top to bottom there and then we just put little wooden shims in it that the bees have glued up nicely with the propolis the lay-ins hive insulated insulated with sheep's wool by the way they're doing extremely well they come from dr leo sharashkin's website and they have three entrances i only use one and this entrance is reduced they get no supplemental feed no help and they are doing great on their own. Both of the Lance hives swarmed this year. So now we're looking at another nucleus resource hive, five over five, so this is just 10 deep frames, all by itself, no supplemental feed, and that's because late in the year we noticed that the five frames that are in the top box are all capped solid honey. More than enough for a colony this size. The resource hives are used to hive very small swarms, or to make splits or to allow us to pull resources such as brood or we might even steal their queen if we find ourselves queenless with another colony so these are performing extremely well this is another nucleus hive five over five no feeder shim at all so again swarms occupied it they're doing well they look healthy also look at the ground in front of your hives and see you might see a bunch of dead bees piled in front and that could be because they're cleaning house back to the apame hives here this is a different one of course seven frame over seven frame this is their nuke i really like this design all the upper vents and accesses are closed and we do have the top feeders filled with fondant on this one fully occupied right next to it nuclear five frame nuke nucleus i'm sorry not nuclear very small entrance why because it's occupied by a tiny swarm at the end of the year it has a enclosed bottom board screen with a removable tray 
five frame deep and then we have a feeder shim up there and we can put fondant if this hive did not have fondant on it they would be dead i'm using hive alive fondant to get them through right next door lysen hive six frames polystyrene well insulated this will be my first winter with one of these look how they're doing again this was just for the swarm that we put in here and uh, we just leave them to themselves now that hive top is built for feed, liquid, or solid. You have to pull the center plug out. Now this one, Old Langstroth Hive, medium super, insulated inner cover, which is working out very well. No upper entrances, no top venting, and again the hive gate, metal entrance guard because it's 3 eighths of an inch high, and we have deer mice here and house mice. Deer mice jump up on these landing boards nightly and look for ways to get in. Now this particular Langstroth right here worries me a little bit feeder shim on top, insulated inner cover, medium super full of honey, deep brood box, all 10 frame. Look how many bees we have. It actually looks like they're doing orientation flights, like we've got a big boost of brood. I'm a little concerned that their population is high. This bottom board has a built-in slatted rack, has a aluminum screen, and then it has a removable tray underneath. So this is being experimented with. It also has adjustable feet, so you can heap, keep your hive level. 3 8 inch opening with little shims stuck in. Now I did put the 5 pound fondant pack on this one because I'm concerned. Their population is extremely high. They're way too active for this neck of the woods and when things get really cold. Feeder shim on top of this one, insulated and recovered by B-Smart, double deep 10 frames, the Hoover there. And you can see that that uh, bees wax is kind of wearing off. The bottom box, the brood box has been treated with eco wood. And then we have these entrances reduced 3 eighths of an inch high. You can see that the bottom board is flipped to the 3 eighths inch side. And the population is very strong. So there again, there's a lot going on. There is some pollen coming in, particularly with this colony. I don't know what's going on. There's some pale tan colored pollen coming in. And then there's a Cheeto orange pollen. Look at the corbicula of that one going in. They are brooding up. I don't know if that's a good thing. We have a long road ahead of us here. So this is uncommon for this part of the country. We should have snow. It should be really cold. This is a double deep nucleus high, 5 over 5, no feeding. And uh, again, because they had plenty of honey stored on their own, this 5 frame nucleus hive is what the bees will build up the quickest of any of the hives I own. This is a great way to start a colony of bees, and you can continue to stack the five frame nucleus boxes one on top of the other. This one has a completely enclosed bottom. And the first order business for these bees in the mornings when it is warm like this, they start dragging out their dead and flying away with them. So very interesting. Also, while you're doing this, bees land on you. They're just coming and going. No big deal, but it gives us a chance to look at them up close, see how healthy they are. This one's brushing her little pollen brushes together on her hind legs. I don't know where they're going. I don't know where the pollen could be coming from. I know of no plants that provide for them this time of year. But this is a very interesting hive. Here's another one, very quiet. Hive number 33. And I keep these entrances closed halfway, guess what? All year round. So no matter what they're doing, I keep the entrance reduced. These are small hives, and bees tend to do extremely well with small entrances. No top venting, no upper entrances. We have the insulation cap on it, the two inch rigid foam board insulation. I'm talking about the pink stuff you can get from your building center. Just cut it, shape it, make a cap, put it over the top, and below that is a migratory cover. The migratory cover sits on double bubble. So these are doing really well. They're also bringing in pollen. I don't know where that's coming from, but they're wasting no time. They would be foraging for water, you would think, but of course we've had a lot of rain too and we had a big snow melt off. So here again, another lands hive doing extremely well. It's got an amphibian on the side of it. This little frog is being thoughtful, wondering why the weather is like this this time of year. Amphibians don't do well in snow, so it's probably very happy to have this warm up. In fact, the 26th of December is also warm in the high 50s. This colony gets no help, no feed. And they swarm this year. Both of the lands hives swarmed. They build up strong colonies, strong numbers. 
they are drying out all of their comb and this is a great hive configuration insulated again with sheep's wool and I took the top and insulated that as well so there is also a sheet of double bubble over the backs of all the frames to add insulation to the top we don't vent these either the little thumb screw you see there is just in case we need to use oxalic acid vaporization to treat for mites did we treat for mites this year yes we did this, by the way, would be perfect weather for treating for mites with oxalic acid vaporization because the clusters have obviously opened up and the bees are moving freely, coming and going. So this is a, of course, custom painted hive by Horizontal Bees. And then we have Ivory Bee. This thing is going to go through winter. If we're taking bets, I'm telling you, this colony is going to do extremely well. It sits on the porch, otherwise exposed. This is the way to be Academy building. And uh, this is where we teach about honeybees. Now look, we go to this pond, and normally you would hear the bees all over the edge of the pond. I did not hear a single bee here. That's because there are little patches of melting snow all over the place. Little puddles, little spots for them to get their water. Why travel all the way to the pond if they're getting what they need right next to the hive? So patches of melting snow like this are plenty for the bees. They're flying a lot. We're going to get a lot of flying days this week. So late December, things are looking good. 57.9 degrees outside and of course 57 inside too. Why waste energy? Just put on warm clothes. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed it. They're warm. Keep up with your bees. Mm -hmm.